What up, Pittsburgh Steelers fans? Matty P, Marky D here with you. Another episode of Mad Monday. Today, we're looking at the Steelers veterans and how vital they are to victory. Marky D, how you doing though, first things first? Man, I'm doing real well. It's one week away from the game, which is crazy. Uh, it feels it feels like the longest off-season in ever, in history of all off-seasons. You know what I'm saying, doesn't it? I know, it has felt like a long... And like, we obviously kicked off the channel just sort of a couple of weeks after the Super Bowl. So for us, it's a really, it's our inaugural season with Steelers touching and under on our own thing. You and I actually, uh, to uh, by weeks, it was end of last week. It was Thursday. I think it was Friday. Uh, but by date, to, when this goes to air, will be the third anniversary of you and I doing podcasts together, formerly doing really? podcasts and YouTube together. Yep. Wow. Not and including the audition we did back for Steel Curtain and BTSC. But um, yeah. So this is the, but the what's actual really, first kickoff one, it's it's three years. What's really changed though? We're still pretty terrible. We're still learning. So. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is it? What is the difference? I don't really know. Um, I think we're a bit more informative. Oh yeah, three years ago, right? So what was that? Twenty twenty was around yeah. the. I'd say, you, mate. Back when we just started the podcast, we do like an hour and a half, and I'd have to spend like hours clipping it back to like half an hour or an hour so i don't we yeah. don't have to do that anymore so we're, we have gotten a bit better uh, just one one cut we're good to go mate that's it um like naji one cut one cut. All right um no nah, it's good man we got what seven days ago you had your bucks on the weekend so you had a good yeah. time had a few sherbets yeah. had a few sherbets um it has been a long it has been a long off season, off season because i think we've made so many moves and we're just excited to see our team now but I don't know, man. I, I got a good feeling about this year. I got a good feeling too about this week, actually, too. I think I can beat them. And that's really a good do. segue into the topic for the show. So on today's show, we're going to look at, as I mentioned in the opening, uh, the Steelers veterans and how vital they are to victory. And not just in week one against San Francisco 49ers, but throughout the season. So we'll bring it up from good old pro football <clears> reference. <throat> we're going to talk about eight veterans. Um, now, they all happen to be over 30. This is one of the youngest Steeler teams. I think the average age is like 25.5, I think it is when I saw it the other day. Uh, but that was pre the final roster cuts. Um, but having, but they had some, yeah, anyway, they, they, they had some older players in there that were, you know, they were trialing too. So you got Cam Hayward, oldest player on the team at 34, um, 12 years in the league. Same as Patrick Peterson, but Patrick Peterson's 33. You got Boz, Wizard of Oz. Um, he there is 32. You got Golden, who's 32. You got Kazi, who's 30. Killer Brew, who's 30. Alan Robinson, who's 30, and Isaac Siamalu, who is also 30. So they're going to be our eight players. Minimum time spent in the league is seven years with Siamalu and Killebrew. Everyone else has got eight, nine, and obviously the two guys that have 12. Oh, six, sorry. Um, six for Ka- for Kazi. But also he had, an, I think he sat out a whole year with an injury, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's a little bit of a different thing with Kazi as well. Um, I reckon, Mark, we do this by ranking. We'll rank mm-hmm. them one to eight, eight being least important to victory throughout the course of the season, one being the most important. Um, I'm going to hand over to you. Who, who's number eight? Oh, we list? have to. We go number eight or we go number one? We'll go we're number eight. So we'll start with the oh, least that's important harder. player to that's victory. That's harder to do. Yeah. Uh, the least important player would be, holy dooly, I don't want to say it, but maybe, I think Killebrew. Yeah, I'm going Killebrew as well. I, th- I, I think, think so. I think that's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying him because he's the teamer. No, he's not on deep. But but still, like, teams is pretty important, though. So, it is. It's just like, who else can do that for them? Yeah, but I'm looking back towards the other guys like Kaze. I was going to go him to Kaze. I'd probably say Killebrew. In terms of winning games, yeah, probably probably, probably Killebrew. You know? Because he came from the Lions, I'm pretty sure, back in the day. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. now he's... What, what do we call him? The other? He, he's the new Jordan Dangerfield. That's right. That's, that's what is. we called him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's right. number eight. What about um? All right, we'll just go straight number seven. Seven. Well, the way I'm going to probably do this list, and you can change it too if you want to. Um, or oh, Kazi, safety. Ooh. Okay. What's the different move? Was it okay. going to be golden? I had two. I had two players. Oh, I was going to go golden. I was going to go golden. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going yeah. to go Kazi first, and then then golden after. But <laughs> yeah, saying, I'll just lock you in for Golden Minute number six. <laughs> but in saying that as well, like because Golden is playing outside of TJ Watt, High Smith, but Nick Herbig's there. That's my then point. How they're going to do the yes? They're going to swap that three safety set we've been talking about a lot all off season. We saw it last year. 
you know, Neil gets involved too. Um, but in terms of like leadership and, and veteranship, does Kazi really have that kind of a role? I don't think so when you've got Minka and Neil. Like, yeah. So Kazi's I'll, I'll someone we'll... that until we start seeing the three safety sets in action, it's hard to it's hard to sit there and say, like, he's, a, you know, super integral. But then over the course of the season, with sub package, we might be like, oh my God, like he's vital. And last year he proved, it proved to be vital. Like it was like, oh my he God, was, he's yeah. missing. But then there's a guy like Patrick Peterson on the list we're going to go through who has helped shore up the cornerback room. And then you've drafted Joe, Joe Porter Jr. So I, I think it's it's really hard. Like Z and might end up third or fourth on this list once the season's done. But right now, yeah, I mean, you know, you're having him at seven and me probably having him at six. And that's he, probably he fair, to, I would say. He was out for a few weeks last last year, right? He went the same, out the same time as TJ Watt went down too. So yeah. that was tough to see. Um, yeah, I'd probably say him at seven and then Michael Scott wouldn't at six. So I've got the other way around, basically. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So who's, who have you got at five? We're ripping through Ooh. this a bit quick, but... <laughs> I know, right? Um, five. Hmm. This is where it gets tough, though, I think, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I'm gonna say Robinson. Oh, right? I'm the same. I'm the yeah. same. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of the other blokes in front of him. I think we're gonna get. I think we're gonna differ in the top three. I think that's where the difference. You is reckon? Yeah. Mm, okay. But uh, I, why Robinson? I mean, for me, it's just so the, there's different receivers. There's going to get the ball. Like, the you know. show the same thing I was gonna say. Actually, man, yeah. this, this that's what I mean. That, we, we've been doing them too long together, three years. But I mean, I think. Uh, all right, this is where. All right, so this is where I'll start getting interesting. I'm not surprised we broke through this. Who have you got at number four? So I did Robinson there. It has to be. Ooh, it has to be Isaac Siamalo. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Why? Why? Why are you? Why are you shocked about that? I know my top three. Actually, I, yeah, I, I'll I'll stick with it. I'll stick with it. Okay. I found this really hard. Oh, I think he's more important than James Daniels on the offensive line. I think he's one of the most. I think apart from Cole. Only because there's no backup to Cole. I think he's the most important offensive lineman right now. Um, and I think you've seen that already in the preseason. And he's the veteran. So I don't have him at four. You're this is going to surprise some people. But yeah, I've so got Patrick Peterson at four. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's different to my list. Yeah. Um, now, the reason I do that as well is because of JPJ, because of Levi Wallace, because of Minka, like the defensive backfield. Uh, now you brought in Desmond King. You've got Shannon Sullivan. Like I, I think there's enough in the defensive backs. Well, we said wins too, though, right? You want players who can who can like yep for wins, right? So I'm 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 going a different direction too, though, actually, for what I'm thinking, because I'm thinking like points and stuff like that too. That's what I'm thinking too. That's what I'm thinking oh, too. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, because I, guess I just think that Siamalu, I've got him high because of the ability. Like his like his block was the reason why Warren got free in, in that yeah, game true. for that Run, TD, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like, he shores it up. I, I was watching a really interesting um, discussion. I think it was DJ was talking about it when the Steelers got Sam Malu. Um, I think it was DJ. Anyway, someone was talking about the fact about interior offensive linemen to being really key to certain quarterbacks, and it's why, like, Breeze did really well. Um, and he went through a bunch of different quarterbacks like that. And then you watched Kenny Pickett's style of play, and interior offensive linemen are almost – more important than the tackles. Um, so I, I just think that Sam Mullo on that left side is huge for Kenny Pickett. And yeah, uh, that's that's kind of why I don't have him at four because I think it's hard to tie him to points, but he'll keep Kenny clean. And that means Kenny can do ma- yes, make magic And he's happen. also good leadership too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like good leadership for the team, for the offensive line. Um, but I went I went my list just off the top of my head around a different different way if that makes any sense. Because, like, my top three are going to be now Haywood, Peterson, and Boswell. Yeah. And I have well, I'm to go... I'm going to go Sam Marlowe at three, right? So let, let, then tell, me, tell your, me who you've got at three. Who, tell me who you've got at three. Who's your four? I forgot who your four is. Pat P. Peterson. Okay. Uh, my three is Boswell. Okay. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but 
Well, and it's I- not crazy to me because I haven't said him yet. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, <laughs> Again, we've been doing podcasts way too long. <laughs> because I, I think that Chris Boswell obviously – can be a leader because he's scoring points, man. You see your kicker go, kick a 50-yard yard field. Exactly. Like, pumped up, right? Uh, you win some games like that. He's a wizard of Boz. He's the guy. So, And he scores points, so he can he can win them games. That's that's why three. So he's your three. He's your three. Yeah. Right? But I understand why you put now Peterson a bit higher because I've put him – I think we all know who number one's going to be. But I've got my next one, uh, Peterson at two, I think, two. Okay. But that might be a bit higher. But no, I kind of like – because I, I was thinking – more him being a veteran guy and if he can, you know, teach Joey and stuff like that, get the cornerbacks ready and Mink is there as well. It's going to be a really good partnership. That's why I had him so high. I got I got Boswell at two because I agree with you. Right. Yeah. There wasn't a, no one talks about him, man. The, the media doesn't talk about Boswell. You know, he's the second, I think this in, in the NFL, NFL now, he's the second ac- most accurate kicker behind Justin Tucker. Yeah. And no one talks about him. He's like 88% and Tucker's like 91 or 90%. Yeah. It's ridiculous, yeah. man. He had like one bad, one or two bad years with his injury, and maybe a bit last year, a little bit too. And no one talks about him. Yep, it's ridiculous. He's one of the best kickers, and kicks in a really hard environment too. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Um, well, it's no surprise who number one is. Then. Number one, Cameron yeah, Haywood. Yeah. Uh, we've ripped he's, through he's this. everything. He's like, like yeah, yeah. To win so, games, yeah. I want, go leadership. into why. Go into why Cam Haywood for you, and then I'll go into why for me. Oh, just because he's, he's he's the he's the man, he's everything. He's the he's the leadership of the team. It's it's in the guys over thirty. You want to you want to put TJ Watt in there because you know he looks like he's thirty five. But you know Cameron Haywood is the guy. He's the the guy that's going to lead the defensive line, get the, the middle linebackers pumped up, everyone pumped up. And if he's leading by example, getting sacks, he what, what did he get last year? Ten sacks or twelve? Something uh, like that. 10, ten, I think I can pull that up. Yeah, he got something last year, and he's you know he's two sacks away from breaking Debo's record, so I think he might break that, and then uh, then TJ Watt can break his record. But he's the guy. So for me, it, it's it's Cameron Howe. We can lead on the field, off the field. Can be can be a coach. He can, can be everything. Excuse me, he's he's the dude, man. I think he it was had like ten, 10 and a half. Yeah, ten and a half sacks. Yeah, look year. at that, ten and a half for the for an uh, defensive lineman. Steals went nine and eight. Oof. Yeah, I got in the same reason. I think it allows it make it forces the opposition to have to account for him as well, which means that helps TJ and Alex Highsmith. That helps Ogum Joby. It's going to help Benton. And the other thing too, he can just shut down. Like he forces quarterbacks to throw the football faster, and he can help shut down that interior run. And I think that's the that's the difference with Cam Haywood. Is it's not. The key to victory of him being able to score points like Boz, otherwise I'd probably have Boz first on this list. It's and Alan Robinson will probably prove himself maybe even to be worthy higher than even Pat P. He scores a yep. few TDs early, but Cameron Haywood can stop the other team scoring points, and that's a really key thing to victory because the less points they score, the less points you have to score. <laughs> like, but he, he's the he's the vocal leader. He's the yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it leader. He's the one-on-one mentorship with um, players is everything that the Steelers love about Steelers players. Cameron yeah, Howard exactly. really is. And we need to enjoy his last few years here. We really have to. We need to win. We need to win one. We talk about winning one for betters. We need to win one for Cameron Haywood. Oh, big time. Big time. And he hasn't we haven't haven't really done one too many playoff games with him either. Right. So maybe, maybe, maybe that's maybe he's a bad luck omen. Uh, I'm joking, still a fans. I'm joking. <laughs> I have a Cam Haywood signed football behind me. I am 100% joking. Please chill out. Yeah, but he, he's the guy, man. Like, that's why I thought if we were going to start one, he would have been the easy number one to pick. That's why it was harder going back to number eight. But I would love to know, what's my list, man? I want to figure out my list. Yeah, right. so the list is Cam Haywood number one for both of us. I had Boswell at two. You had Pat P at two. Yep. I had Sam Marlow yep. at three. You had Boswell at three. Gotcha. I had Pat P at four. You had Sam Marlow at four. Okay. Uh, we both had Robertson at five. I had Kazi at six. You had Golden at six. Gotcha. I had Golden at seven. You had Kazi at seven. And then we both had Killebrew. So really the biggest difference is Pat P on our lists. It's bloody, bloody planes outside. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear him. They might be coming from Newcastle. You know those planes that come from Newcastle? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're having a good old time out there. Um. Yeah, my bad. But yeah, we've both got the same player in three instances out of that. Yeah, but no, it, 
it actually it shows you too. So what we got on teams, we've got Boswell for a vet, we have Killebrew teams, we have a receiver vet, we have offensive line vet, uh cornerback vet, and D line vet too. And who who did I miss? Outside linebacker vet. Yeah. All guys all around the field are all these kind yeah. of vets. So it's kind of kind of funny because I talked about this on the show that I did yesterday. For anyone that's not checked it out, go check it out. Um, it was all about uh, how many snaps and starts will the Steelers rookies get, the drafted rookies get. And it was interesting when you look at the, we've got depth in a number of key departments or, or positional group rooms within the team. And then you look at this and you do this show today and it's kind of like, we're talking about it now. And it's like, then they've got the veteran depth. So we've got the youth at, at a lot of positions now. And now we've got the veteran presence. And then there's the guys in the middle as well. So it's, that's what I mean. This Steelers team is getting so balanced, and that's what you need to be really successful in the NFL. Like, and and I don't think we've had this balance between veteran and rookie, and like you know the guys in the middle of the peak of their powers um, in a very long time. It's it's great to see. What's the, what's the most an annoying take you've heard all off season that really has frustrated you that 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 didn't make any sense from any NFL media outlet? Miles Garrett's better than TJ Watt. Really. Yeah, uh, that's the one that gets me. All like Miles Garrett and their other pass rusher are better than Highsmith and TJ. And like I'm like, hmm. nothing to do with Kenny though. The, the 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 new train now is everyone's on Kenny because he had. The- I think because I was on the Kenny train last year before a lot of people were, and I, I remember how much I say to you, Kenny's the man. Kenny's the man. Kenny's the but man. But it doesn't make any like, sense. Like they've all just now jumped on the ship, but we kind of saw this like in the last few weeks of the the regular season. We saw versus the Ravens game. And the and the Raiders game, and then also then pre and then we saw it in uh um camp as well, and now all the media guys are jumping back or jumping on the train saying he's the best. There are guys out there that like I can't name too many names, but like on the NFL media, I think actually yeah. was one of the ladies, Joy Taylor. She was so against Kenny Pickett, and then now today she's like on, on Colin on, Cowherd's one of those people. Yeah, oh, he's like, like this. <laughs> you don't know that guy, you know so. They at the start of the year they had they had really bad things to say. He, he can't do anything. I don't respect he can be elite. The next minute, it's like the NFL media is like, "Oh my goodness, Kenny Pickett's awesome." <laughs> but I think we see we saw it last year. I just thought I find it crazy. I but that's crazy. I had a show that we did on in May. I might even put it at the card at the top when we started talking about Kenny Pickett um, just now, where it was like, "Why Kenny Pickett? Five reasons why Kenny Pickett's the most underrated player or quarterback oh, yeah, in the too. NFL." Mm-hmm. And like you go through the stats, like. All the signs, all the evidence was there that he was going to be this good. Now, I think he's putting putting it together really quickly. And you and I we talked about it off air or on air a few weeks back of like people have to be prepared that there might be parts of the season where Kenny doesn't do as well as what we think he is. He is still a guy and going into his second year. It's not going to be perfect week in, week out. But on what on all things being equal, what we've seen, it's going to be good eight, eight times out of ten, you know, and that's really really exciting. Don't give up if, if we if we if you throw the yeah. pick the first game, don't give up. Like it's not it's it's good. If long... he has a game this season with three or four picks, that's what it is. Yeah, like, that's what it is. But I'd rather yeah. him throw them. It's like I said this last year. I remember it was like toward the end of the season, one of the games. I said to you on one of our lives, I was like, I'd rather him throw three picks than Mitch Trubisky throw three picks. Because at least Kenny's out there learning from it. And he doesn't throw... Like, that's the other thing. He threw lots of picks quite quickly. And then he didn't throw any anymore. Like, he learned from the mistakes. And I, the way how clean he's looked already um, through this preseason, it's exciting stuff. And I think we, we forget too, like, it's, it's we talk so much, I think, in the offseason now. Like, I remember seeing a podcast talk about this. Like, the offseason now, because every day is filled with news, we talk so much about the Steelers that we kind of forget that, like, it's his second year. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he hasn't even thrown a football in his second year yet. In his yeah. second year, remember that. Big Ben had 18 years, and it's Kenny's second year, and it's like, we can't even label him this or that. So it's like, it's, it should be an exciting process, to be honest. Like, And Ben, like, you can't, like, knock what Ben did in his rookie year where he came in. Ben was was, was incredible. But Ben had a better supporting cast around him in his rookie year than what Kenny had last year. 100%. 100%. Yeah, and now, and now we get a better O-line too. Yeah. So. Uh, I bet, but Kenny, I would say Kenny's got better infrastructure now around him. Like better this infrastructure around him. Better receivers too with George Pickens getting, you know, better. Well, this this year's George Pickens is better than last year's George Pickens, right? So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think like we 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 give up so easily, man, on, on the team and sometimes the quarterbacks. Like, 
if he struggles, so what? Who cares? Just keep going. Like, we all make mistakes. And it's his second year. That's what's so fun about this stuff. His second, think about second year. And you get him for, if you sign him for a good deal after, after his contract, fantastic. We got from Big Ben to Kenny Pickett. Like, nothing wrong with that in my, in my, in my eyes. But with that, that's going to wrap up this week's episode of Steelers Touchdown Under Mad Monday. If you like the show, hit the like button. Give us a sub. If you have not subbed to the channel yet, that's when you're going to know when we're doing lives and all the good things coming up over the next few weeks to start the season. And as always, Marky D. Go Steelers. Here we go.